I reacted to South Park medical scenes last year, and you liked it so much, you came out to my tour and begged for more. I need more South Park from you, dude. Or at least one of you did. Huge thank you to ShipStation for sponsoring this video. Be whoop. Okay, Kenny, I'll bet you $100 you can't light a fart on fire. <laughs> He didn't just light a fart on fire. Lart a fart on fire. Light a fart on fire. He actually lit himself on fire. Load that IV with 70 cc's of sodium pentothal. Why is he bleeding profusely? Yeah, you have skin damage and some blood loss, but you're not just shooting out, gushing out blood. Vacuum. Try to untangle his trachea and esophagus. Untangle his trachea and esophagus? The trachea being your windpipe, your esophagus being your food pipe? Like, why are they tangled? This looks like my virtual simulator. <laughs> this is why you go to medical school. You throw the intestines away. Doctor, his heart stopped. So you gotta do chest compressions, chest compressions, chest compressions. We need to zap this, quick. No, you don't gotta zap it, you gotta squeeze it. He's putting it in the microwave. Jesus. Who's making a potato? Is that George Clooney? Kenny? Kenny, can you hear me? Oh, shit, dude. How are you feeling, son? Yeah, I'm so cool. Great. Son, I have some bad news. We accidentally replaced your heart with a baked potato. You have about three seconds to live. So he wouldn't wake up is what you're saying. In all reality, burning yourself is quite dangerous because it causes you to lose fluids because skin prevents fluid loss. And you need to carefully manage not just fluids, but electrolyte balance in patients who have severe burns. What is a proctologist, chef? He's a doctor that specializes in your asshole, children. <laughs> We've moved away from using the term proctologist to now discussing that specialty as colorectal surgery. Some people confuse a GI doctor and a colorectal surgeon. They both focus on the GI tract. Colorectal surgeon is a surgical field that mainly focuses on the anus, rectum, and intestines, where the GI doctor focuses on the usually mostly non-surgical approach of the entire GI tract from mouth to anus. There are both colorectal surgeons and GI doctors who perform colonoscopies. Usually though, what happens is the GI doctor performs forms the colonoscopy, and if they find something that needs removal, they then send them to a colorectal surgeon. That's usually what happens. What seems to be the problem? We just want you to take a look and tell us if you see anything abnormal. Other than its monstrous size. Well, proctologists also don't look at buttocks, so they wouldn't tell you anything about your glutes. Well, the prostate seems to be normal. No swelling of the hormonal gland. Oh, wait, what's this? <laughs> Okay, alien satellite dish not usually found in rectums. 2022, line Dr. Mike. You know that feeling when you take a huge dump? Awesome. Well, doctor? Uh, I've never quite seen this before. Uh, perhaps he just needs some hemorrhoid cream. Hemorrhoid cream is usually focused on uh, dealing with inflammation. So there's some kind of steroidal component to the cream. There's also pain relief component, sometimes like lidocaine or benzocaine. Hello everyone, my name is John Garner and I'm a nutrition advisor from the USDA. There's been a lot of confusion about gluten lately. And there's also been a lot of confusion because of your ridiculous food pyramids that make no sense. People saying that gluten is the cause of cancer, gluten should be avoided, gluten can make your dick fly off, but let's set the record straight. Make your dick fly off? So what is gluten? Gluten is the protein component found within wheat. Gluten is the protein found in flour when you take all the starch away. Not a bioweapon, just harmless flour protein. Then eat it. Excuse me? If it's not dangerous, then eat that pure concentrated gluten. Okay? Yeah, all right. Is he a robot? What is that? Oh, you see that? His dick's flying off. We did have a period in time where people were deathly afraid of gluten. There was a good reason for some people to avoid gluten, those who have celiac disease, which is a true autoimmune disease, that when your intestines are exposed to gluten, your body starts to have an autoimmune reaction where it starts attacking the intestines. So basically your intestines, in order to have more surface area for better absorption, have these little projections called villi. And these villi actually are the ones that make contact with gluten, present them to the body, and then your body starts attacking these projections 
projections called villi. Therefore, you get blunting of the villi and they get short, which can lead to malabsorption, lack of certain nutrients and vitamins, diarrhea, bloating, pain, etc. And there are some situations where you have non-celiac wheat sensitivity, where eating wheat can actually give you an upset stomach, but it's not an autoimmune disease like celiac disease. That's why when you go to a restaurant, some people say like, oh, I prefer to avoid gluten-based products is one thing. But if you're a person with celiac disease, you want to avoid having foods prepared in a facility where gluten is present. There's hot dog buns in that cupboard, Sharon. Hey, Dad, I need to talk to you about this party we're having. Oh my God, the wheat thins! And the Triscuits too, Randy! Wait, wait, I might need those. This stuff will make your dick fly off, Dan! The thing that surprised me the most, because there was a period of time where I, I uh, went gluten-free, was soy sauce has gluten in it. What about ice cream? I don't know! Look at the ingredients! It's sometimes used as a thickening agent. Heavy cream, sugar, chocolate syrup. No, ice cream's good for you. <laughs> ice cream's good all right, for you. All right, that's all of it. You sure? All right, you got the whole... I can get both of these, yeah! All right, come on! What's going on? Well, that's just a beer. Oh, Jesus. Beer is all wheat, Cad. Shut up. Beer's bad for you? <laughs> We're gonna need you to come with us, sir. Don't touch me. Look, I'm okay. Y you wanna see my dick? We just need <laughs> you to be in quarantine for a while until everyone figures out what's going on. How'd you get exposed? Bagels? Gravy? Beer. I didn't know it had gluten. <laughs> There's always something. For me, it was the soy sauce. Sir, we've got a boy on the hotline who says he might know something. Who is this? My name isn't important. What matters is that the answer is in the pyramid. We built the pyramid a long time ago to illustrate how much people should eat of the four basic food groups. <laughs> and it was the shittiest pyramid guidance ever. It's upside down. What? Sir, we've got a match. Nutrition is stabilizing. We've got a well-balanced vaccine, sir. Get the president on the phone. Tell him to have some steak with his butter. <laughs> Please don't do that. The saturated fat is out of control. Let me quickly tell you about ShipStation, the leading web-based order management and shipping software. It's designed to make retailers' lives easier by processing, fulfilling, and shipping e-commerce orders more efficiently. I know the hassle of running an online business. I've been shipping out merch for the better part of a year, so I understand the value of having the right tools before you get started. Imagine if I started selling merch before having solid management and shipping infrastructures in place. I'd be buried in orders and unable to grow my business. Thanks to ShipStation, you can focus on growth from day one as they eliminate the headaches that come with printing labels, handling orders across multiple platforms like Amazon, Etsy, eBay, even your own website. Get the same discounted shipping rates as Fortune 500 companies, whether you're sending a stack or a truck full. 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with them, and 98% of companies that use them for one year become customers for life. Ship more and grow more with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com slash Dr. Mike. Remember, doctor is spelled out. And if you sign up today, you're going to get a 60-day free trial. Start today and get set up before the biggest shipping season of the year. That's two months free. All right, let's get back to some South Park. Hello, boys. Your mommy has a bacterial infection called C. diff. Oh, that's problematic. Clostridium difficile is a type of bacteria that can live in the gut, but then once it multiplies and it becomes to the infectious level, it creates foul smelling, heavy, watery, mucousy diarrhea. So much so that you could transfer it to other people through contact. We actually, in hospitals, when a patient tests positive for C. diff, put them on contact precautions, where in order to walk into the room, you have to glove up, gown up, and then wash your hands with soap and water before and after. All of us have trillions of microscopic critters that grow on and inside our bodies. And some of them actually help us with digestion. We can't use antibiotics because that will kill all the good bacteria too. Well, that's not true. We absolutely have antibiotics that we can use. In fact, one of the common uh, antibiotics we use is one called vancomycin. is a very potent uh, antibiotic that we usually use through IV methods because it is not well absorbed when you're taking it orally. But now imagine if you have an infection in your intestines and you want the medication to stay there, then taking a medicine that is not well absorbed actually is beneficial, hence why we use vancomycin in these types of infections. So what can you do for her? We need to take a healthy person's microbiome and start to grow it inside your mother. We do this with a fecal transplant. 
We'll get a donor species, mix it with water, and put it up your mom's anus. We actually do do fecal transplants. That actually has really good high rates of clearance of the infection. I recently saw there were some medications being tested where they actually freeze dried some of that poop into capsules, and then you take it, and then it opens up in your intestines, and it serves the same purpose. You swallow it? Yeah, but it's in capsules. Because if you don't, if you don't take it by mouth, the only other way to do it is through a colonoscopy. Parents, I'll call you all together because I think you might be making a mistake putting your children on Ritalin. But our kids have attention deficit disorder, Chef. They can't pay attention in school without it. There's this doctor in Northern California who is doing really amazing things with kids who have ADD. I want you to watch this tape. For attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, Ritalin is a medication that is prescribed. It's similar in nature to Adderall, although it's a different medication inside. In Adderall, you have like an amphetamine-based prescription, whereas in Ritalin, it's methylphenidate. What's different is the time of onset. So in Ritalin, the peak comes sooner than it does on Adderall. Therefore, it lasts for a shorter period of time. This treatment is fast and effective and doesn't use harmful drugs. Watch closely as I apply treatment to the first child. By the way, there are legitimate non-pharmacological behavioral options for children and adults who are diagnosed with ADHD. Sit down and study! Now I laugh at this because it's South Park, but in reality, this is kind of mean-spirited because patients who have true ADHD, it's not as simple as just sit still. Their mind is literally racing and it's not a discipline issue, it's a biological issue. And at the same time, I will say there are parents and children, mostly parents, that request medications for their children when it's probably a lack of discipline that is the issue. Which one would I say is a greater problem? I think it's worse when you poke fun at people who actually need the medicine and would benefit from it, but it's more problematic to society when you put children on medicine that they don't need. What do you think? I can have Dr. Shea come to South Park for a small fee. That video had pretty colors. It sure did. Damn it! Have you all been taking your children's Ritalin too? Yes. yes! Well, adults have ADHD too. And it's not necessarily runs in families, but there is a potential genetic component there. Professor Chaos cannot be staffed. Oh yeah? Kitty, use your ninja star! Hmm. <laughs> Ooh, ninja starts to the eye. <laughs> Don't pull it out. Seek help immediately. Just stay still, Oh, butters. no. <laughs> Just why would you do this? Stop, dude. You're going to scramble his brain. You're not going to scramble his brain. You're going to cause him to bleed out. You guys can't fix my eyeball. You have to take me to the hospital. Yes, please. We need a doctor, but we can't go to the hospital. And you need a very specific doctor, because if you bring me, I ain't doing smack. Wait, wait, wait. What about the veterinarian? Dr. Shafley, he's really old and, and going blind. So if we make Butters up to look like a dog, oh no. <laughs> Hand me the modeling glue, we need more fur over here. This reminds me of those mobster movies where uh, they can't go to a, see a doctor, so they go to the local vet to pull out the bullet. <laughs> oh my God, what the, doctor, doctor. Jesus Christ. <laughs> What kind of sick bastard would do this to a dog? Poor little pup. Can you help him, doctor? I'm afraid I wouldn't know how. Unfortunately for this little fella, I'm a people doctor. Best we call the animal shelter. Right away. Oh my god, I can't even react to this because there's nothing I can say. I ain't doing smack. Yeah, you like that? Yeah. Ooh, man. Oh, Lord. Ooh, he is getting sir. Randy? Why is, again, the stupid chart looks like he's in a recession in the stock market? Like, what are we looking at? And what are the vitals and bar graphs above his bed? He got served. Worst I've ever seen. His dancing was so fast, I couldn't do anything. His moves were so original, so inventive. Why does he need nasal cannula oxygenation for that? He mostly got served here and here. But the worst serving was here in the pelvis region. The road to recovery will be a long one. What is the injury? Is it a fracture? Do you know what happened to me this morning, Stan? This morning, I woke up and felt a sharp pain in my ass. I felt down there and, and found this big sore lump. Was it a pimple? Was it a hemorrhoid? Which part of your ass are we talking about? I have a hemorrhoid, and Cartman has his own theme park. 
That's not the end of the world. A lot of times hemorrhoids happen from people spending a lot of time on toilets. A lot of time it's from cell phone use. People just hang out for a long period of time. Bearing down a lot when having bowel movements, usually as a result of constipation, that can happen. So increasing fiber is really smart. What's that? It's my seat ring. I have to sit on it because of my hemorrhoid. That seat ring not only helps with hemorrhoids, but also coccidinia. Come on, dude. Oh God, I popped it. Oh, it hurts. What the hell are you doing? Oh crap. Oh God, get me off of here. A bleeding hemorrhoid uh, that has thrombosed bleeds very heavily. Stan, I have to go home. I need my cream. I need my cream. It's not just cream. A lot of times it might need surgical intervention. When I say surgical intervention, it could be something as simple as a banding procedure where we literally put a, uh, put a tight Band-Aid over the area and it chokes it out of its blood supply. And as a result, it ends up falling off. I'm sorry. Your son appears to be losing the battle. What is he, septic? I'm afraid that the hemorrhoid has spread to his lungs. <laughs> what? It's not a cancer. In fact, a hemorrhoid is just a blood vessel that has expanded, usually to the point where it can't shrink back down. If it got infected, it's now infected and expanded. Not something that's contagious. Normally, the body would fight the infection, but he's, he's just given up on life. But then, are you saying? There's nothing more I can do. Little fellas just lost his will to live. You could just give him an antibiotic and cheer him up. But I will say mindset is an important factor in whether or not someone gets better and how fast they get better. Those who have a positive optimistic outlook do tend to fare better. Goes hand in hand with the placebo studies and the sugar pill people 30% of the time experience the same effects as the ones who got the real medication. Yeah, that's a pretty bad lice problem there. Good thing they pulled you out of school. Well, actually, lice, people think, lives in, in dirty hair, but the reality is cleaner hair makes it easier to transfer lice and also for the lice to move around and get comfortable. Maximal killing power. Ooh, I love the rain. <laughs> These are cute lice. What is that? You know, you never think about things like that. <laughs> I kind of feel bad for lice now. My sympathy goes up for lice. Rip lice. Did you know I performed surgery virtually? Surgeon Simulator and Virtual Reality. Click here to check that out. And don't forget to visit chipstation.com slash Dr. Mike to begin your 60-day free trial. As always, stay happy and healthy.